Drag 101 with Katya, a theoretical exploration of the art and science of drag. Episode 20, Tuesday Morning Lecture, Legacy, Leaving a Permanent Stain on the Bathroom Floor. <laughs> Hi, it's Katya, and welcome to another episode of Drag... What? <gasps> it... I... Where has the time gone? <gasps> Listen, it has been... One, five, five, seven long days of a silent meditation retreat somewhere in the world. We've been here for three months and we've learned so much yet nothing at all. And it's over today. The pressure's on, the stakes are high and I am, I'm horny. I'm horny for the future. And I hope you are too, because what are we gonna do when we die? What are you gonna leave behind? How do you make a mess that no one can clean up. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Um, that seems like an exaggeration. But I can't find a front door. I don't know where it is. I think I go through the window in my snuggie. How do you parlay your 15 minutes of fame into not only a lifelong career, but a legacy? Have you ever tried wearing a funky hat? When a drag queen gets older, it becomes very depressing. Unless you're RuPaul or Lady Bunny. Actually, she's very depressing. How are you going to navigate the transition into your twilight years as a drag queen? Think about it. Sounds terrifying, doesn't it? So drag queens are known for their creativity, for their inventiveness. They're also known for being selfish, vindictive, and conniving. But sometimes, especially as a drag queen ages, the desire and the need to pass on the skills of the craft become almost a maternal instinct. Real mothers have complex biological mechanisms carved through the ages by evolution that compel them to love their kids. The drag mothers don't have that, they don't even need to like you, so you need to grease up their wheels. Buy them a Walgreens gift card, take them to TGI Fridays, clean their toilet, Offer to digitally extract compacted feces. What is she gonna get out of this situation other than you blooming, blossoming, and then taking all her gigs? You have the opportunity to give this young wretch a shot at the big time. Not big time, I mean, it's drag, so it's like not big time at all, but you know, we, we play. And it's also a way for the community to become connected. Because oftentimes the cutthroat jealous, conniving, competitive nature of drag and everything else becomes very isolating and lonely. I cannot tell you how many requests I've gotten to be people's drag mother, which I don't understand why, but it's flattering nevertheless. The answer, of course, is no. Say you're the most beautiful female impersonator in all of Missouri, but you're turning 50. You can make a shift in your career Maybe you were Nicole, Tiffany, LePage, Dupree, Davenport, Brooks. Now you can be LaWanda, the garbage lady. You know, you, from glamor to comedy. I mean, if you're a comedy queen, you can show up with a burlap sack with cat shit all over it and a, you know, just a chicken bone taped to your bald head. Doesn't matter. Drag queens typically don't um, have relationships. Look at the people from season one of RuPaul's Drag Race. Amazing, talented performers, all dead. That's gonna be me in three years. Four if I'm lucky. Five if I'm really lucky. Six if it's not true. My body's changing. My bones and flesh are losing its um, resilience and elasticity. I cry a lot more. I'm going through a second puberty. I think about suicide. Not me, but other people's. You know, when you're 22, you're like, oh, fucking stupid, I don't get married, like, who can't, you know? But then you're like, well, what if I'm gonna be alone for my whole life? What if I don't have any money? You know, what, what if all, all I have are just a bunch of uh, lace front wigs and sequin gowns, you know, gift certificates to TGI Fridays? Is that a life that I'm comfortable living? Absolutely. Be the person that you don't think you have the time to try and figure out how to be, even though you can't, but you want to. Well, that's it.
<laughs> God, that was confusing, enlightening, tempting, and a little bit depressing, but mostly joyful and <sighs> refreshing, right? I feel refreshed and I hope you do too. I hope you feel so refreshed that you will watch some of my other videos. Rewatch them. They're great the second, third time around. I hope that you learn something, not necessarily about drag, not necessarily about yourself, but something about me. I hope you use that information to allow yourself to be compelled to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Follow me on the web. Log on. Log on. <laughs> it's so easy these days. You do it. You do it from your phone. You know, you 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 tap a button. You 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 say, "Hey, log me on," and you're there. That's it. We're done. No more teaching. No more learning. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time for whatever we're doing. I hope it's good, and I hope you're there. Goodbye. Drag 101 with Katya every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, honey. <laughs> I love the internet, and I love the body, and I love to make stuff for you to watch, and it's gonna be great, and you're gonna love it, you're gonna click and click, and watch and watch, and you're gonna love and love.